Oh, by the way, I, again, I'm going back and forth. Sometimes uh, in your class you use S for intensity and sometimes you use I, but maybe I should be consistent. So uh, I'm, I'm using S in some places and I in other places. Um, I guess your book usually uses S, so I guess I'll go back to S. So I'll go back to using S for intensity. But, and then that S is the same pointing vector S, because that is also intensity. The pointing, um, S is the magnitude of the pointing vector. The pointing vector tells you both the magnitude of the intensity and, since it's a vector, it also tells you the direction that the light is moving in. But the magnitude of the pointing vector is the intensity. That's right. Um, so yeah, if you, so a good example question would be, they could tell you the intensity of this light, and they could tell you theta, and then they could ask you for how much radiation pressure you can get from the uh, light after it goes through the polarizer. Well, first of all, you would figure out, uh, so I'm sorry, they would tell you this. They would tell you the intensity of the old light. Then you would use uh, Malus's law to find the intensity of this light. And then you would plug that into this equation to find the radiation pressure. Or um, to make it even more, here's the equation for the pointine vector. This is the pointine vector equation. So they could tell you the electric and magnetic fields of the original light. And then, you could, um, and then they could ask you the radiation pressure of the light afterwards. So if they give you the electric and magnetic fields, you can um, figure out what the intensity is of the original light. Then you can use the law of Malus to find the intensity of the new light after it goes through the polarizer, and then you can find the radiation pressure. There's tons of things they could ask, because there's lots of other things that have intensity in them. So this is something you can add to that big flowchart. Um, we have a flowchart of all the different concepts that relate to intensity. Well, now we have another concept that relates to intensity. Now, in your flowchart, notice this actually relates intensity to intensity. It relates the intensity of the original wave to the intensity of the new wave. And, uh, and we pretty much did kind of prove this. We can see from the picture that the amplitude that gets through is going to be the cosine here. And since the intensity is proportional to the square, we're not surprising that we have to square the cosine here. So it's actually not that abstruse a uh, formula. And then this is the same intensity that we looked at a bunch of other formulas for. Uh, just remember that sometimes uh, if he gives you a cheat sheet, he might write the intensity as high, and he might, or he might write it as S, but they're all the same formula. Okay. okay. Um, all right, so, uh, so uh, the law of Malus is not too complicated to use. So let's see what the law of Malus would say for this polarizer. For this polarizer okay. and this light, the angle between them is um, zero. So the cosine is one. So the same. And the intensities would be the same. So I would draw the arrows at the same length. We already knew that. That's just common sense. And on the other hand, suppose the polarizer yeah, looks like this. So what do you do? Be Careful. What would theta be? Uh, uh, 90. Yeah, theta would be 90. Now they're perpendicular, and the cosine of 90 is. And now, no light would get through. And the intermediate cases is when the cosine is between 0 and 1. What the cosine is between 0 and 1, its square will also be between 0 and 1. And then the new intensity is always less than the old intensity. So I think the angle 45 came out. So 45 would be the, the brightest. It would be in between the, but that would just be the middle brightness. Yeah, I guess it would just be. Uh, the middle, and also, um, let's see. Well, let's see, so uh, if theta is 45, what's the cosine of 45 degrees? Squared of 2 over 2. And then what would be the cosine squared of theta? Um, 2 over 4. So not surprisingly, when you're at a 45 degree angle, how much, of, how much intensity gets through? Half of it. The new intensity is half of the old intensity. That, that's kind of what you would have expected, I think. Um, so we know that if we start with the polarizer parallel to the original light and we start rotating it, the new light will get dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. And it's not surprising that when the polarizer is halfway through that rotation at the 45 degree point, the intensity is down to half of what you started at. Okay. Those are the key things I can think of for polarization. Do you have any questions on polarization to go through? Yeah, cleared up a lot. Okay, good. Yeah. All right, but since we put that time into it, you definitely should try to find some questions on polarization to do. Because even once you understand the basic concepts, 
you still don't know how to solve problems until you've actually done that. So you want to try to find some polarization problems. But hopefully now at this point, um, now the answers will make sense or what the book says about that will make sense. Yeah,